Hey guys, today we're going to talk about basically the parts of the atom, the atomic structure. Okay, and so when we talk about atoms, atoms is basically the basic unit of all matter. Now, if you could recall, matter is just anything that takes up space and anything that has a mass. All right, and so the basic unit of all matter are atoms. All right, and a substance that's made up of one single type of atom is considered to be an element. All right, so for example, um, you have like aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is an element because it's only made up of one type of atom, which is aluminum, okay? And the list of all the elements and all the different types of atoms you could find on a periodic table, okay? And when we talk about the structure of the atom, the atom basically are made up of three subatomic particles. So within the nucleus, all right, so here is an example of a nucleus. You have two subatomic particles. So in the red here, we got our protons, okay? And in the blue, we have our neutrons. All right, now let's kind of talk about some of the characteristics and the functions of protons and the neutrons. So protons are your positive subatomic particles, so they have a positive charge to them, okay? And the most important aspects of it is that the number of protons basically determine um, what element, or that determine the identity of the atom, all right? So what do I mean by that? It's like if you look at all the different atoms of all the different elements, they all have unique number of protons. So for example, carbon has six protons, and that's always the case. So any atom that has six protons is going to be a carbon. Oxygen has eight protons, okay? Hydrogen only have one proton. Okay, so if you so happen to change the number of protons of the atom, you're going to change its identity altogether. All right, so that's one of the big things about um, protons. It determines the identity. Then you have neutrons. Neutrons, they have a neutral charge, so there's no charge to them. So that makes that, though, nucleus overall overall has a positive charge because the neutrons which are in the nucleus do not carry a charge okay now the neutrons its main purpose is to stabilize the nucleus now um, so basically the neutrons keeps the nucleus from falling apart or degrading whatever the case is all right so that's why the number of neutrons in a particular atom, it's very, very important. And so then in the electron cloud, we have, which is outside of the nucleus, we have the electrons. Now, electrons are extremely small subatomic particles compared to um, protons and neutrons. So protons and neutrons, so subatomic particle size are roughly the same. Um, we typically call it 1 AMU, meaning, so we're saying the size of these two, all right, is roughly, or the mass, 1 AMU. AMU simply stands for atomic mass unit. So it's a like, lot like grams or pounds, but this time it's for atoms, okay? Um, so compared, so these two are 1 AMU, and when we're looking at the mass of electrons, I mean, Compared to this, it's like 0 0.0005 a AMU. So they are extremely, extremely small compared to um, the rest, of, compared to protons and neutrons. All right, so kind of going back to the function of electrons. So electrons, they carry a negative charge, all right? So its charge will kind of counterbalance the charge of a proton one to one, okay? And they are responsible for uh, bonding interactions um, between other at um, atoms, all right? So what causes chemical reactions is really due to electrons, electrons moving around from one atom to the next. And, you know, this is the reason why we see explosions here and there, stuff like that, chemical reactions, 
It's all based off, off of these guys, the electrons. So here's an example of an element symbol. And let's kind of talk about what each of these things stand for. So obviously here we have the element name, all right? So this element here is gold. I almost write out gold. Um, right, but this is the element's name, okay? So here we got gold. Here's the element symbol, all right? So oftentimes we write elements based off its symbol. So if you see AU, it is gold. And oftentimes these symbols are based off either this Latin or its Greek name. So in Greek, gold is aurum, A-U-R-U-M. So that's where it kind of came from. So that's where the AU. So it may not always be English, so don't expect it to be, okay? Now, this number here is a really important number. This number, we call it the atomic number. Now, the atomic number basically represents the number of protons that each of the element, each of the atoms have of this element. So in this case, for gold, gold atoms have 79 protons, okay? And last, we'll talk about this number um, in more detail later, but this number is what we call the average atomic mass, okay? Um, and basically, it's just the mass of all the different types of gold um, and its percent abundance that's found in nature. But as I said, we're not going to really talk about that much in this video. But in another video, we'll go into this number much more deeply. Now, one of the things that you guys are required to do is that if I give a particular atom, can you determine... How many protons, neutrons, and electrons it has, okay? So, for example, let's start with something very simple like this. So, O is oxygen. So, this is your chemical symbol here. So, that's letting you know that we're dealing with oxygen, okay? So, you can look that up in the periodic table. All right, so this number here is what we call the mass number, okay? So, now the mass number basically let me reset real quick all right so the mass number basically represents the sum of the number of protons plus that's a positive the number of neutrons and that shows it's neutral okay so when we're looking at this atom this simply means that this atom has 16 protons plus neutrons together okay this number here is your atomic number now if you recall your atomic number simply represents the number of protons okay so here when we're looking at this oxygen atom we can already tell that this oxygen atom has eight protons okay now for atoms when we use the term atoms, that simply means the atom is has a charge that is neutral, all right? So if that's the case, if the atom is neutral, then the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So in this case, you also have a electron. So if you were to to do the math here. So if we're looking at the number of protons, so we say, well, we have eight protons. How do we know that? Well, your atomic number is eight, okay? We have eight electrons. How do we know that? It is a neutral atom. So there's something else that you will see that will tell you that the number of electrons or protons are different. But in this case, if you have nothing but an atom, it also has the same number of protons. So here we have eight electrons. And because your mass number is 16, all right, that means there is it's eight, there is 16 protons and neutrons combined together. Well, if you know you have eight protons, then you must also have eight neutrons, okay? Because eight plus eight is 16, okay? That's how you kind of figure that out. 
All right, so I think it's probably best if we could do another example. All right, so I'm going to pull another one. Um, oh, let's kind of go back to gold, right? So gold, which has the atomic symbol of AU, all right? So let's say its mass number is 200, and its atomic number is 79, okay? So let's figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So how many protons does this have? Well, we based off the atomic number. The atomic number tells you the number of protons. So in this case, we have 79 protons. All right, well, how many electrons do we have? Well, since this is an atom, atoms always have the same number of protons as they do of electrons. So in this case, we have 79 electrons, okay? And then last, we need to figure out how many neutrons we have. All right, well, in this case, if you look at this number, your mass number, your mass number tells you the sum of protons and neutrons, okay? So if you want, if you're a little bit mathy, you want to kind of put an equation to this, well, we know that, okay, if this sum is 200, all right, we know we have 79 protons, okay? We just got to figure out how many neutrons we have. So I guess in this case, you just solve for N, okay? And so when you solve for N, what do you get? Um, so you get 200 minus 79. So 200 minus 79, kind of do the math here very quickly for those who probably want to see this. So this is one, two, one. So we have 121 neutrons in this atom of gold, okay? So this is basically how you figure this out. So when you get a symbol that looks like this, the bottom number, remember it talks about the number of protons. So this number of protons, all right, this gives you the sum of the protons and neutrons, all right? And if you have that, you could easily figure out um, the number of protons here, the number of electrons, and then the number of neutrons.